So today we have Professor James Murray, a 1996 Nobel Laureate, uh, joining us this evening. It is indeed an honor to have you, Professor. Thank you very much for joining us. So um, your talk was very insightful and intriguing, to be honest. And uh, you spoke about causes of wealth inequality and causes of it and uh, the significance of collecting data to um, investigate regarding that and more. And uh, so building on to that, uh, from what you said, uh, I would like to ask a question from the talk where, where you said uh, wealth, wealth in inequality, sorry, um, the one of the causes would be due to earnings inequality and earnings inequality itself, uh, it's probably largely result, uh, it's a result of education inequality. So do you think we should be underpinning, uh, tackling the problem by underpinning education inequality first? Uh, all, what I said, or at least put on the side, uh -huh. was that earnings inequality was a result of uh, inequality of... Uh, I, I, I found some much more general work. Human it, investment, you mentioned. Uh, human investment, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning not only education, mm -hmm. but uh, how you spend your time at home when you're two or three with your parents, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether you get nursery schooling, mm -hmm. a lot of very important things. But uh, one of them is supposed to be just conversation around the table, or is it in or what kinds of programs appear on TV when you're mm -hmm. at home. So, it's, it's well beyond education in the, the sense that people usually think of it. But uh, it's only half of it because, uh, I mean, I, I didn't mean that numerically. I mean, <laughs> uh, because the, just the inequality of people's abilities is clearly uh, an important source here. All right. Thanks, Professor. So, um, Back then, you were also involved in a project in India arranged by Amatya Sen. And uh, could you just tell us a little bit, like, how was experience like? And was this a reason that probably developed your interest in this field of development economics? Um, I should uh, be precise about the project. OK. It, it was a project run by the MIT Center for International Studies in India mm -hmm. to, to provide, the purpose was apparently to provide assistance to the Planning Commission mm -hmm. in these earliest years of, of development. And uh, a lot of said, mm -hmm. uh, knew the man who was running it. And because he knew that I was very interested in development economics and wanted to, uh, I was really wanting to go to some developing countries, he said, I think this would be a very good way to, to go. So he, he, he got me onto the, the project. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't his project. All right, okay. Uh, indeed, I remember. Uh, Ian Little saying, but I'm the, I'm the British representative of the project. <laughs> why did you, why did you let him out of you? I see. Because I didn't know Ian. Okay. But uh, it, it was, it, so I, uh, in a sense, I already answered the question. I, I was already interested in developing the economics to the extent that it was because of learning about developing countries that I didn't change to the economics at all. Mm -hmm. But I had d done a PhD thesis that had no very close connection mm -hmm. with developing countries. It was about the mathematical theory of taking decisions with uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, that, I see. A long run. I hoped it would be relevant one day. But it, uh, I, I'm sure it is. 
All right, thanks, Professor. Um, okay, yeah, moving on, you mentioned about um, uncertainty and uh, the thesis that you mentioned about. So basically, um, it is said like theory of information and incentives have also revolutionized economics. And you have also come up with various um, uh, impressive contributions such as the optimal taxation and etc. So um, just building on this, with regards to this, recent years there's been an expansion of interest in behavioral economics, so uh, which draws on the ideas from psychology and uh, to shape these theories. So do you think there should be an integration of other disciplines in probably designing such theories along with uh, the standard theory of economics? Well, uh, economists have been uh, formulating their ideas have been very much influenced by psychologists, the work of psychologists. Indeed, uh, I think that several of the, the most useful models mm -hmm. of uh, different sort of behavior mm -hmm. come from psychologists. Psychologists who manage to speak a language that the economists <laughs> understand yeah. is very considered. Uh, but, but not all, interestingly. It seems to be that psychologists and economists are in many ways thinking in parallel there. And I know the first of these sorts of models. Thinking of a model by Luce, which is just embodies the simple idea that it, since people can't be completely rational in their choices, perhaps we should say that they have a higher probability of choosing something that will be in their best interests than choosing something that will be a long way from their best interests. But they still might choose the other. But I think that, that seemed a very promising framework and it has proved to be very useful. I, I think the connections are very direct in uh, explaining people's transport choices, which is quite an important area. Yeah. But uh, then the, the idea of bounded rationality. came from a, I think he'd probably be described as a somewhat disillusioned economist <laughs> who moved much more into understanding general decision making and business. Thanks, Professor. Um, now I'm going to move on to possibly the most asked question in your whole career, basically the highlight of your career, the memories from 1996. On the day that you were told that you received the Nobel Prize. So, uh, Professor, could you just tell us what were your th thoughts that were running on your mind and when, you, when you probably got the call or when you were informed? Like, what exactly were, we, were you thinking when you got the news? Uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, no, that's not the highlight of my life. Oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and I think that was when I uh, solved the problem. Which included the formulation of uh, uh, asymmetric information, mm -hmm. as we now call it. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly not sure that in 1996 the best thing that happened to me was uh, going to Wagner's Ring at uh, Covent Garden Opera. Because oh. I got a hold of it that year. <laughs> That a special experience. But that's just thinking of it in terms of what the special experience. Uh, I've probably thought more about the Nobel Prize afterwards. <laughs> uh, but what were the thoughts? That, uh, uh, I, I think, like a, a lot of uh, Nobel Prize winners. I wondered how I was going to deal with the 
the volume of emails and phone <laughs> calls and letters that we might have to come. Uh, I mean, that, that just slightly takes the gloss off it. Um, at first, we feel that there's a, a real risk that you'll get swallowed up by people yeah. taking very kindly and warm <laughs> interest in it. <laughs> But uh, just as that's, in a way, the worst aspect of it. Mm -hmm. It's also the best aspect, because I, I, I thought soon after that what I would never have predicted was that, the, that, that suddenly, that, in a way that I never felt before, that I, I found I was appreciated. And it was also very nice as part of it that um, uh, it was a real delight that people were, so many people were really pleased that they got it. Uh, so it's, it seems unpredictable kinds of things. So actually hearing from people is a very nice feature. Oh, that's very interesting to find you get to know. Well, that's the psychology. Yeah. <laughs> Narrow egotistical side of it. <laughs> I mean, what it should have uh, made me feel well, now I should solve the remaining problems there mm -hmm. or something, but I don't remember that reaction. Uh, so, throughout your life, did you have any specific role model or inspirational figure, or specifically who do you think uh, was behind your achievements and etc.? It's an interesting question. It's, I, 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 don't, I think you asked it quite so directly, but, <laughs> but uh, a lot of people have expressed that interest. Um, I still can't think of anyone. But, uh, there are people who are really stimulated me in particular ways. Uh, and got me really interested in some issues or problems. Mm -hmm. For example, a, a cousin that I haven't seen for seven, uh, 60 years, but uh, uh, he became a professor of philosophy. Right, okay. And uh, he, he really got me interested in philosophy. Mm -hmm. And that, that, was, that was very splendid and an exciting experience. And then there were back to the experimental behavioral economics. Mm -hmm. uh, a lecture by Ms. Tversky, who was mm -hmm. one of the people who really got all this started, yeah. which I thought was a very exciting experience. So there are lots of uh, people who have done things that got me excited about something. But th that's all very different from the role model. Oh, no. Yeah. Well, the inspiration kind of thing, and I, I just seem not to be the kind of person who right. yeah. does that. And it, it, I think it's very interesting because it's widely believed that everybody has had a, say, a, a teacher yeah. who has, in, in that sense, inspired them yeah. uh, to, to do things. Mm -hmm. It's the difference between inspiring yeah. to, to be interested in something yeah, uh, or, or to you learn from it, uh, inspiring and motivating. Mm -hmm. I, I think I just have a person who needed the motivation and I suspect that uh, this conventional view that uh, role models natural mm -hmm. as far as I can see that's, that's not really I see, that's interesting. True. Yeah, I read about uh, how you got into philosophy because of your cousin, and I thought that was really interesting as well. So, yeah, that pretty much sums up most of my questions. But um, just the last part, how are you finding your time at the summit so far? Well, it is, uh, uh, the, the audience looked, looked, looked slightly difficult to see the back 
Okay. <laughs> a little dark. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I like that lecture all. I, I think I've given it before. Oh, okay. And uh, I've been enjoying the questions mm -hmm. people ask. That's nice, Professor. Thank you very much for uh, being here today and speaking about uh, inequality as a whole. And uh, that would be the end of our interview today. Thank you.